Wall and welcome to Stingray Toms, Florida and another deeper dive into the archive. This is part two of my look at the Florida tourism iceberg. As a refresher, iceberg charts start above the surface with subjects almost everyone knows and get more obscure as you follow the iceberg into the depths. I put one together on Florida's attractions and today I'll be looking at the three tiers that represent the attractions which are well known to Floridians but not really known outside the state. Please watch part one of this mini-series but you don't need to watch it before this one. Also, as I mentioned in part one, each of the attractions are open as of 2024. If your favorite didn't make the list, no worries, tell us about it in the comments. Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge Located on the same barrier islands as Canaveral National Seashore and Kennedy Space Center, Merritt Island is part of a large wilderness area along Florida's central Atlantic coast. It's the only one of the three federal lands that doesn't make up part of the coastline. As the name suggests, it's a great place to view wildlife with large areas of mangrove wetlands as well as Florida scrubland, the ever-disappearing habitat that is home to the enchanting but endangered Florida scrub jay with about 8,000 left in all of the state. Florida Museum of Natural History Chartered by the Florida Legislature in 1891 and today working directly with the University of Florida in Gainesville, the 25 million artifacts in its collection include items from nearly every aspect of nature, plants, fungi, vertebrate and invertebrate animals, as well as fossils, archaeology, and ethnographic specimens. Likely the most popular part of the public exhibits is the Butterfly Rainforest, the museum's outside arboretum with about 50 species of moths and butterflies, as well as quail, finch, and turtles. Zoo Tampa First opened in its current location in 1957, the zoo began with a few small animal exhibits and kitty rides. Some 30 years later, it was still small and quite neglected, so in 1987 it had a massive redesign and afterwards grew into one of the larger zoos in the state. It has some 1,300 animals, as well as several rides, primarily for children. It has one of the larger collections of snakes and lizards, as well as a number of unusual species from Australia, including koala, New Guinea singing dogs, and flying foxes. Springs. Florida is likely the number one place in the world for freshwater springs. There are over 700 that feed water into our lakes and rivers in the north and central parts of the state. There are 21 state parks that contain springs and they often have the largest flows. 33 springs are first magnitude, 191 second magnitude, and 151 third magnitude. For reference, first magnitude ones produce at least 64 million gallons of water a day. If that's surprising, the largest of Florida's springs produces nearly 10 times that amount of crystal pure water. The Norton Museum of Art Known as the Norton, it has the largest collection in Florida with major collections in Chinese, American, and European art, as well as photography. Like the Ringling Museum, the collection began as a personal collection, this one amassed by millionaire Ralph Norton. First opened in 1941, it's located in West Palm Beach. Over the years, the size of the museum has grown to around 150,000 square feet. Gatorland Opened by Owen and Pearl Godwin in 1949, between the small cities of Kissimmee and Orlando, it was one of the first post-World War II attractions. When it opened, it had the inauspicious name Florida Wildlife Institute. While located on the Orange Blossom Trail, the Godwins discovered that tourists were driving right by, so the name was changed to Gatorland. Today it has one of the largest collections of crocodilians in the country, including leucistic and albino alligators, and is one of the best places in Florida to see and photograph nesting birds in spring. Canaveral National Seashore The federal land that's a sister to Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge runs along 25 miles of the Atlantic coast. 
all of which are home to some of the state's best beaches and lots of wildlife. While the land is undeveloped today, Canaveral is one of the most important archaeological sites for Florida's indigenous people, with well over a hundred sites that show human habitation dating back more than 4,000 years, including Turtle Mound, which is one of the largest shell middens in the state. Gasparilla Fest I recently wrote about Gasparilla. It's one of the oldest and most popular annual events in Florida. Founded by Tampa's elite residents in 1904, it's grown into a festival that sees attendees from around the state. Its theme of pirates focuses on Jose Gaspar, a fictional pirate that might just have been invented for the festival itself, though no one seems to know the real story. The event includes a flotilla of dozens of boats that escort a modern three-masted pirate ship, a parade through the city, and live music. Florida Folk Fest With the first festival being held in 1953, it's one of the oldest folk music and cultural festivals in the country. It's held at the Stephen Foster Folk Culture Center State Park near White Springs on the banks of the Suwannee River. Crowds of 50,000 people watch 300 music performances through a long weekend. There's also a rich folk life area featuring dozens of Florida artists and craftspeople who display and teach, and a Seminole family camp that presents traditional music, crafts, and food of the Seminole and Miccosukee tribes. Florida Aquarium The Florida Aquarium is the third animal attraction on the iceberg located in Tampa. It's also the newest, having opened on the waterfront in 1995. It focuses on fresh and saltwater life throughout Florida, and is designed so the visitors walk a path, ensuring that they have an opportunity to see each exhibit. The displays begin with a recreation of a freshwater spring and follow the path of water until it enters the Gulf of Mexico. Wikiwachi State Park Mermaids first swam in Florida in 1947. After cleaning out a spring that had been a dumping ground for locals, Newton Perry, better known as Newt, built an underwater theater and asked local women to perform balletic moves in the crystal clear 72 degree water among the turtles and fish. Located on US 19 in an area with little development, it was nonetheless a popular route to get to Tampa and points south. Wikiwachi quickly became one of the most popular attractions. Today it's owned by the state park system. Silver Spring State Park, yet another attraction centered around a first magnitude spring that became a state park. Silver Springs is likely the oldest attraction still operating in the state. The ancestors of today's glass bottom boats are thought to have been invented in 1878, making the site an attraction, though people had been swimming there for decades. In the midst of the Great Depression, from the 1930s through the 1960s, Silver Springs was one of the most popular attractions with a reptile zoo, auto museum, and deer ranch. Salvador Dali Museum This museum's collection numbers only about 1,500 works. Pretty small compared to the Ringling Museum with 10 times that many, but the art is just from one artist. Dali was one of the most influential and popular artists in the 20th century. Even though his work was avant-garde, he was able to catch the eye of both the public and the critics. The art ranges from simple graphics to some of the largest canvas paintings ever made. The museum is located on St. Pete's waterfront and often rotates the art on view, so it's good to go back occasionally. Gulf Islands National Seashore it's not surprising that Florida can boast two national seashores, with Gulf Islands encompassing parts of the state's two westernmost barrier islands. Along with protecting the natural beauty of the area, it also manages fortifications that protected Pensacola Bay in the 19th and 20th centuries, those of Fort Pickens, Barrancas, San Carlos, and the now scattered remains of Fort McCree. Homosassa Springs State Park 
Like Wikiwachi and Silver Springs, this is yet another state park that was an old attraction centered on a spring. Notice the theme here? Homosasa is one of the best places to view manatees in the winter when they migrate to the springs to stay warm. On top of that, it's a wonderful little zoo that has Florida native species, with one massive exception, Lou the Hippo who was a TV and movie star decades ago and who's clearly the star of Homosassa Springs today. Ravine Gardens State Park Known as one of the Florida Depression-era state parks, Ravine Gardens was built by the Works Progress Administration in a geologic formation known as the Steephead Valley. Created by the small spring-fed Whitewater Branch, the ravine was formed by water eroding the sand from underneath, resulting in the land above collapsing and creating cuts up to 120 feet deep. The WPA started work in 1933, and it was they who initially planted thousands of azaleas that have made the park famous. Fort Caroline National Memorial Located on the St. John's River in the Timucuan Ecological and Historic Preserve, a national preserve east of Jacksonville, the site of the reconstructed fort is generally considered to be very near the site of the original French outpost built in 1564. It was the first European settlement in Florida, but only lasted for about a year as Spanish forces attacked the fort and killed the French military. Today, the park teaches about the earliest European colonization efforts in Florida. Icon Park One of the youngest attractions on the iceberg, Icon is really a collection of attractions. Opened in 2015, it is the site of the 400-foot Orlando Eye, now known as The Wheel, along with Sea Life Aquarium and Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, all of which are still open. Another museum, Skeletons Unleashed, was also original but closed in 2020. Icon, which is nestled between International Drive and Universal Boulevard, has bars and restaurants and added the Star Flyer, a 450-foot swing ride, in 2018. Fort Clinch State Park Construction on the fort began in 1847, but came to a halt at the start of the Civil War when American forces withdrew and the fort was occupied by local Confederate forces. They abandoned it in a year. The U.S. Army returned and continued construction. Fort Clinch never saw action, and by 1898 the Army left it to the elements. The Civilian Conservation Corps restored the fort during the Great Depression. The state then purchased it to make one of the Florida's oldest state parks with beaches and a campground. Oldest House More formally known as the Gonzalez Alvarez House for two of its previous owners. The house is thought to be the oldest one in St. Augustine, having been built around 1723. In 1918, the St. Augustine Historical Society purchased the property and went on to restore it to an earlier style that better reflects its appearance in the 18th century. The oldest house has been a popular tourist site for about 100 years and is typically a must-see on St. Augustine. The oldest house has been a popular tourist site for about a hundred years and is typically a must-see in St. Augustine, along with the Castillo and the Fountain of Youth. St. Augustine Alligator Farm Located on Anastasia Island, just a short drive from St. Augustine's Old Town, the Alligator Farm is the oldest zoo currently operating in the state. It obviously focuses on crocodilians and currently has about 24 species from around the world including Maximo, an Australian saltwater crocodile that's 15 foot long. It also has non-crocs, including snakes, birds, and mammals, and along with Gatorland has a large and visible breeding area where wild birds raise their young each spring. Ripley's Believe It or Not Let's go for the trifecta of St. Augustine sites now. Opened in 1950 in a mansion known as Castle Warden, this museum of oddities from around the world was the first of its kind. 
named for and containing part of the collection of writer Robert Ripley, it opened a year after Ripley's death. It was immediately popular and would lead to a franchise with 28 auditoriums around the world, including one in Orlando. Wild Florida Yet another gator park, Wild Florida opened in 2012 with both a small zoo featuring alligators and other Florida animals, plus airboat rides on Lake Cypress. A few years later, it added a drive through safari park with animals from each continent other than Antarctica. Ocala National Forest Established in 1908, Ocala is the oldest national forest east of the Mississippi River and the southernmost in the U.S., with 600 square miles, it makes up much of the land between the city of Ocala and the St. John's River. The forest is filled with springs and streams, scrubland, lakes, and even a bombing range for the U.S. Navy to drop live munitions. It's one of the most popular forests in the state, especially for camping, fishing, and boating. Jacksonville Zoo like so many zoos, Jacksonville began somewhat as an accident when locals had a European red deer fawn to show to people. That happened in 1914, with the zoo being officially established in the following years and moving to its present location in 1925. Currently, the zoo has 2,000 animals and it's also become a botanical garden as well. Animals on display include jaguars, African elephants, bonobos, and lowland gorillas. Mission Nombre de Dios The only church on the iceberg is also the oldest European religious site in North America. The mission sits on the land where the Spanish created a settlement that would become St. Augustine. The mission with its church and the national shrine, Our Lady of La Leche, memorialized the first mass held on the continent in 1565. It's a popular stop in St. Augustine for people, regardless of their religious beliefs. Wakula Springs State Park Officially named for the wealthy financial planner who donated the land to the state, Edward Ball Wakula Springs is one of the most popular state parks in the Panhandle. It is yet another attraction centered around a spring, one of the most powerful in the state. The Florida Aquifer is accessible through a cave system that is one of the most extensive in North America. For less adventurous visitors, there are glass-bottom boats like those at Silver Springs and the historic 1937 Wakula Springs Lodge. Gulfarium Staying in the Panhandle, we head to Fort Walton Beach in one of Florida's many oceanariums, aquariums that concentrate on aquatic mammals. The Gulfarium, which opened in 1955, has dolphins, sea lions, alligators, sharks, penguins, and more, and is located directly on the beach. While it's a fairly small facility, it produces fun and educational shows. Its main pool is a historic structure that's been in use for nearly 70 years. Sunken Gardens Located in the center of St. Petersburg, Sunken Gardens isn't your average botanical garden. True to its name, the four-acre attraction was built inside a lake. That's how Florida attractions are done. Drain a lake and create a microclimate that allows the propagation of more tropical plants than normally survive in the area. Created by George Turner in 1903, it's one of the oldest attractions in the state, and by the 50s, it was one of the most popular. Butterfly World Located in Coconut Creek, this rather unusual zoo opened in 1988. It was created by Ronald Bowender, who raised butterflies for zoos, and it's considered the largest butterfly zoo in the world, regularly presenting 20,000 butterflies and moths to its visitors. Likewise, they can tour the lab where the animals are raised, as well as displays of other insects, both live and mounted. Plus, it's the home of the Passiflora Society, which encourages research on passion flowers, an important food source for many butterflies. History of Diving Museum 
Situated at mile marker 83 in Isla Morada, this small museum is filled with just about everything you could imagine that represents humans exploring the deep ocean. Opening in 2005, it displays the remarkable lifetime collection of Sally and Joe Bauer. It tells of the complicated development of technology, including diving bells, diving suits, diving helmets, and diving cameras, plus many artifacts from the deep. Naples Zoo This attraction became a zoo in a very roundabout way. The site began as a botanical garden in 1919 by Dr. Henry Nerling. After Nerling's death in 1929, the gardens fell into disuse until Julius Fleischmann restored and expanded it, opening Caribbean Gardens in 1954. It wouldn't be until 1969 that wild animals appeared at the attraction, brought by Jungle Larry and Safari Jane Tetzlaff. They were looking for a place to house their animals during winter. Today, Naples Zoo is one of the finest in the state. Elliott Museum Located on Hutchinson Island near Stewart, this museum has a rather eclectic collection of historic items. Built by Harmon Elliott and named in honor of his father Sterling, the museum is known for a large transportation collection including cars, trucks, bikes, and even an early seaplane. The Elliott also has a large collection of signed baseball cards, baseballs, and game-used bats that is second only to that of the Baseball Hall of Fame. There's also an art gallery and one for local history. Theater of the Sea Opened in 1946 in a former quarry on Windley Key, this is one of the longest-running oceanariums in the state. Theater of the Sea has an interesting and effective daily program. They do multiple interactions and demonstrations in each of its theaters throughout the day, and guests go from one to another to watch dolphins, sea turtles, sea lions, stingrays, and parrotfish, gators, and parrots. The park's dolphins perform some of the highest jumps in Florida. Hemingway House Completed in 1851, Pauline Hemingway's uncle bought the property for her and Ernest in 1931. Since 1964, it's been a museum dedicated to Key West and Ernest's writings. In the eight years they lived here, he wrote Green Hills of Africa, To Have and Have Not, and Islands in the Stream, some of his best works. Once, while Ernest was away, Pauline had the key's first in-ground pool built. When Ernest found that she spent $20,000 on it, he declared, You might as well take my last cent, and threw a penny on the ground. However, Pauline used her own money, and Ernest would come to enjoy swimming in the pool, in the nude. Bishop Museum of Science and Nature First opened in 1946, the Bishop was one of the earlier natural history museums in Florida. It's located on Bradenton's waterfront and features a large collection of Florida's archaeological artifacts and fossils, along with artifacts from Bradenton's history. While it's unusual for a natural history museum to showcase live animals, the Bishop has been home to Florida manatees since 1949 and is active in their rescue and rehabilitation. The Edison and Ford Winter Estates Inventor Thomas Edison first visited Florida in 1885 and bought property in Fort Myers upon which he built a vacation home. The car maker Henry Ford, who was Edison's friend, bought the site next door in 1916. Both millionaires regularly wintered in Fort Myers until their deaths. Both estates would eventually be acquired by the city and opened as a popular tourist attraction with beautiful gardens and a laboratory for researching rubber. McKee Botanical Gardens Located in Vero Beach, the site was founded in 1929 when the local population was barely 2,000, and it opened to the public in 1932 with a landscape designed by William Phillips. 
The garden is one of the easiest to get lost in with the property made up of intimate and secluded scenes. There are also several interesting structures and follies, ornamental structures that serve no purpose other than to delight the visitor. Skyway Fishing Pier State Park It's possibly the oddest entry on the iceberg, considering there's thousands of places to fish in the state, but it's a very interesting place. It's the only state park that's just a pier and nothing else. It stretches out into the mouth of Tampa Bay for a mile and a half from the Bradenton shore. Fishing is the main activity, and most days there can be 300 or more anglers at any one time. Open 24 hours a day, the pier is on part of the old Sunshine Skyway Bridge, and it provides spectacular views of the new bridge. McClarty Treasure Museum This small but fascinating museum is located on North Hutchinson Island in Sebastian Inlet State Park. It's the home to artifacts from the 1715 Spanish Treasure Fleet, which was partly sunk offshore during a hurricane. The fleet was only one of many wrecks along this stretch of Florida that's commonly known as the Treasure Coast, and treasure and other artifacts are still being brought up from the bottom of this ocean, within sight of the McClarty. Sarasota Jungle Gardens Like McKee Gardens, Sarasota's oldest botanical garden is fairly tropical in nature due to the latitude. Created on swampy land, it opened in 1939 and is a small zoo as well as garden. It has an impressive collection of parrots and is known for its free-roaming flamingos. Other parks in the state typically keep them behind a barrier, but in Sarasota they're very comfortable around visitors. The garden also has many unusual species of trees and plants. Fort DeSoto Park one of only three parks on the iceberg that aren't part of the national or state systems, this interesting and popular site is situated on several islands in Tampa Bay and is administered by Pinellas County. It has undeveloped beaches, great fishing spots, and of course Fort DeSoto, which was originally constructed in 1898. The remains of the fort and other buildings on the former military reservation are popular places for visitors to explore. So that's the end of the fifth tier and this video. I'll have another video covering the rest of the iceberg chart coming soon. Thank you for watching another of my videos. Please hit the like button and subscribe in order to learn more about Florida tourism history. Stingray Tom's Florida, traveling through time around the Sunshine State.